I'm on the fence about Mr. Beast. I got to meet him in person for me to really make my opinion. Thing is, though, I'm never going to hate on any, anybody because they're successful. That's a silly way to be in life. Don't hate on people just because they're successful. I just, there's some things he do he does that I I would never do. Like ever. what? I would, I would never Give make, out money to people? No, make people happy? No. I would never make my close friends do uh, uh, strenuous challenges for money. Um, what like, they? oh, b b everyone has to put your hand on this, and the last person to move it will not win a million dollars. No way, Jose. That I find that like a little sadistic and, and cruel, and I don't think people's mental health after participating in a, in a challenge like that um, is, is ever stronger. I think it will affect their mental health for a long time. Are you familiar with Hands on a Hard Body, the documentary? No. Hands on a Hard Body was a contest that they did out in East Texas. I'm pretty sure near Longview or Tyler right around that part of Texas, the beautiful part. And there was a local car dealership and they would make these people put their hands on a, on a car. And if you were the last person to uh, have your hand on the car, one hand, you would win the car. They did this every year. Um, and there's a great documentary about, about it, one of my favorite docs. Great musical too, called Hands on a Hard Body. But the, the, then they stopped doing it. You know why? Because one day a guy had his hand and he moved it accidentally and they told him, sir, you're out. He then went into the local academy sports and outdoor shop, got a gun, shot himself. And that's why he stopped doing it? That's why they stopped doing the contest. Yeah. But I'm like, wait till the day a Mr. Beast contest goes down like that. Buddy, I'm uh, I, I'm not one to manifest, but you know what? I did it to my appendicitis. But that's um, out of his control. Some people, you're telling me that anybody, like, I, okay, you're gonna win a million dollars, and you accidentally move your hand, and they go, "Oops, sorry, sorry." But and it's supposed do... to be a fun game. It's supposed to be. It's not supposed to be like that. It's not life or death. Well, okay, if it was for like five hundred, two hundred bucks, sure. But I would never, uh, Joe. I love you so much. I would never make you do something like that. I for wish a you had the dollars. capabilities to make me do that because I would be holding my hand onto everything. Uh, you know what? Correct. I wish I would actually gladly take that opportunity. So you to... would be part of it. Well, I wouldn't. The thing is, I don't wouldn't like orchestrating something like that and doing it multiple, multiple times. You have a piece of long blonde hair on your Sorry, you know, guys, star I've just side been of breaking face. out. You know, the wedding's coming up. I'm no, trying no, no, to like Patricia's hair is like on you. I don't sleep with my, my fiance. I didn't say Not you did. We're married. I'm yeah, sure you guys use the same get brush. It off, get it off my face, Joe. You probably use the same hairbrush. I feel bad. Did I start on a note where I'm bashing Mr. Beast? Mr. Beast. You 100% what's his did, name? but. What's that... his name? Steve? Jimmy. Jimothy. Oh, Jimmy. Jimbo. Jimmy. He seems like a Jimmy. He is a Jimmy. Um, that's so. Like, Do you want to apologize? To... Well, I guess I want to apologize. But then again, if Mr. Beast, if I'm hurting your feelings, I think you should have tougher skin. I'm just Matt King. Like, do you think Mr. Beast is going to be like. <laughs> I just, babe, her, his his wife's like, babe, what's wrong? He's just like, I don't know. There's that Matt King kid said something that hurt my feelings. I mean, he probably could have been a huge fan of you, and now he's not going to watch you anymore. I think his wife does follow me. I, I do think that. But so you know what? Gonna get I, back can have, I can have that opinion. You're but, allowed opinion. But you know what? I keep saying it because you know what? my This is my motive, Joe. To try and get on there? Yeah. You want to do the hand-holding thing. Hand-holding thing? Yeah, give me something strenuous, Mr. Beast. But you want to be part of Squid Games 2.0? Yeah, because I'd rather do it than you making your friends do it for like the 20th time. You guys, today's guest is host of the Unfiltered Podcast, Good Influences, Hoot and a Half, and officially signing on as co-host of the Lightweights Podcast, Matt King. Are you serious, Joe? Yeah, you're officially on four podcasts now. Buddy, you could have me on. I would do it. I would never, I would never back out. You I'm, could, I'm you a could cancer. Do, can you do once a week? Yes. You have the time. There's no way. Oh, well, we got to talk money, but yeah, I'll do it. <laughs> I would do it, of course. That means sick. I don't think anyone else has four podcasts. I know people have three. I, but I've been really wanting to make a fourth one for a long time. But you wanted it to be more, not gimmicky, but more like uh, like a movie thing. I want more of a narrative thing. I want to do a murder mystery podcast. Have Those, we talked about this before? Not murder mystery, but you talked about doing a movie themed podcast. Oh, yeah. That's another one I want to start. So you could I, have five. You know what? If the people will allow me to do it, I'll do it. If, if, if there are people start showing up at my front door, picketing and rioting, saying, Matt, you're doing too many podcasts. That's the day. I'll you stop. stop doing it. But until they start picketing. How many? Who out there in the world do you think has the most amount of podcasts? Burt Kreischer, I think, has three. 
Okay, well, it's probably Bert Kreischer and me. Who yeah. else? <laughs> Bert and I, bet Ander, I bet Anderson Cooper has like three podcasts, but they're all like I don't count different. The, they're like hosts, yeah, so they don't count. Well, well I, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm host, <not> Joe. <laughs> Matt. Uh, Joe, I just first off, I want to say thank you so much. Thank you for letting me borrow one of your podcast studio lights. We use it for Adam's music video. Yeah, are you trying to get into directing? Um, I wouldn't mind trying to get into directing. Was it, this is your second music video you directed now? Third. You Third, directed Joe. Adam Melcher's new music video. When's it coming out? Actually, I'm not sure on the date. All I know is that I need to be focusing on editing all day today. I would say probably by next week. I think so. The song just came out last week. I really wanted you to start doing YouTube videos because I loved when you do your... Uh, Here we go. Ghost. I really liked when you did your friends videos and you cut them to a nice somber song. Thank you, Joe. You know, just COVID happened and then I feel like life wasn't as entertaining and then mm. I just... I just don't I don't do it that often. Maybe I should, Joe. Are you going to film anything for your wedding weekend? Yeah, we're having people who are going to be filming throughout our wedding weekend. You should but walk around I don't want to be make uh but it's my wedding. Uh, I that's the last with thing the... I want to do, Joe. I want to have the to camera be... for myself. Well, you love you really love love making content. It's so it's not even content. It's just like I need Joe's perspective. I don't want someone to get Joe. I want Joe's perspective. I just want to be off my fucking phone the day of my wedding and just be living it cuz I the reason why we're paying other people to be on their phones to or their technology to document the day. I'm not like a. I gotta like get something out of this today. Your fiance All Matt. I want is one on one me experiencing marrying the love of my life, Patricia, and that's just how it's gonna be. And your fiance Matt right now. I am. Your fiance. wedding is how far away? A couple weeks. You pumped. Uh yes, our wedding is now in oh boy, I think it was like 20, 20 days, nineteen the days. Countdown is beginning. What's the final head count of your wedding? I think it's four hundred. Four hundred, four hundred people. Yeah, we thought we thought a hundred people weren't going to come, and now it's four hundred, which is a lot, Joe. It's a lot, and um, that's just how it is. How close am I sitting next to you? That's insane. You're thinking about it. Sitting next to me? I mean, you could probably sit as close as you want to the front of the... Uh, Table in the back? The pews as you want. No. Oh, we're, are you talking about, like, the reception, Joe? Yeah. The well, part the where... reception, there's no assigned seating. But you probably shouldn't be sitting at the main table with, like, me and my groomsmen and, like, so our if, parents. So if I get there early enough, I can sit really close to you? Um. Yes. 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 You can, okay. Joe. Go Follow ahead. My Go ahead. Story to see how close I can get to Matt on his wedding. I night. would love that, Joe. I okay. I gotta ask a question. Were, how were you? Yeah, my wedding just happened. I know, and it was a fantastic ceremony. Thank I you. loved it. I've been thinking about it a lot. How much I enjoyed it. Um, were you that nervous leading up to it, or I can't remember how nervous you were. I was only nervous during the first look because that's kind of what we hyped up for so long just amongst the two of us is like because I'm going to see her dress. I'm going to see her for the first time. And that was like the, our big day. We don't see each other until like five hours into the morning. Oh, right. So that was the only thing I was nervous about. I wasn't nervous about standing up there in front of all my family and friends because that that was a moment I knew everyone goes through. So I wanted to suck it in and enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah. But the first. I, the, I it, See, it. Yesterday, that was something very similar to me, was the first day I Googled anxious about wedding Reddit. Uh -huh. like, you know how, like, you're having, like, a slight feeling, but then you're like, but I don't need to be asking, like, Google about the problem. But I just need to, like, see people on Reddit of what they're talking about when it comes to being anxious at a wedding. And the thing is, I'm not anxious, one, about marrying Patricia at all. Most certain thing that I've ever felt in my heart and in my soul is the best decision I could ever make. But it's... It's a little, I'm just getting anxious about, and it's not also all the attention on me in that moment of like being up there on the altar. It's just like the day. And I, I guess I'm a little bit of an anxious person where I'm always like, is this annoying to you? I'm so sorry. You really don't have to do this. Like I'm very, I struggle with like, I need to be a little bit more selfish in my life to be completely honest because I'm just like I give and I give and I give myself to other people. But the moment when it comes down to me going, hey, can we do something for me? I feel terrible. I feel like I'm the biggest inconvenience for people. I feel like I'm inconveniencing people to come to my wedding. I had that same feeling. I'm a little like I'm like. Like people are sometimes people are texting me questions where they're like, oh, so, hey, where's this thing at? I'm like, first off, 
check the fucking website. I love you. But I'll, I'll answer the question for you. One, I've never asked a bother to bride or groom ever in your life. Don't bother them about the logistics of their wedding. I had a They're, couple of people text me that day because it was the day of the hurricane and the earthquake. Yeah. So there were a couple of people say, do you do you see what's coming? Do yeah, you see what's happening? It, obviously. <laughs> it's your wedding. What? You've planned it out. You've been looking at the weather or you've been looking at the weather radar far longer than any of your guests have. You know. Someone goes, "What's your game plan?" I was like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> Where do these people get the nerve you to know, say something like that? I'll tell you after, but I'm sure you can figure out who it was. <laughs> Oh, I'll I, tell you after. I'll tell you after. Well, oh, we'll talk about other. I've had some people who've been like, I mean, my wedding, our wedding, is in two or three weeks, and they're going, "Hey, um, who's documenting your wedding?" And I'm like, "Well, we have photographers and a videographer and everything." And they go, "You know what? I just don't think they're going to be getting enough good footage, so I'm going to probably bring my camera, and I need to go document stuff. Actually, I'm probably going to go buy a camera to go document yourself." And I'm like. You don't need to. Is that friends it's or family? Friends. Uh huh. Friends who are who are questioning what uh, I'm booking, and I'm just like, where, <laughs> where have you been told this is a good idea? Never once have I ever told a bride or a groom doubted the way they're going to be documenting something. The thing is, I'm fine. I'm fine. So there's things like that that I'm getting just like, why are you bothering me about this? Right. So then I'm thinking, do I need to be? doing something am i missing something no i think people just want to make it about themselves yeah because it's insane that they have the audacity to say anything like that to you on your day that you're paying for that you've been planning yeah <laughs> and, and, the thing, and i don't take like too much offense to it it's like, not it's offensive. Not, i'm not losing sleep it's not gonna ruin my day but it's just like where did you did you grow up in a barn <laughs> yeah it makes you think people are are aliens because the way that they act is just not normal i agree <laughs> this liquid death though is really good not an ad yeah all, i am all, vibing with this uh, all three of them are really good do they good. send you this yeah I'll give i you thought a... liquid death was like a really rich rich person drink <laughs> 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 like it's like the it's the evian water of like of the nouveau rich <laughs> right i don't know i i love canned water i think it's so good um how involved with the wedding planning are you? Do you know everything and on the Patricia, day? Patricia, uh, well, Patricia says I can't wait for you to come to my wedding. Yes, like, that's what Caitlin said. Yeah, I can't wait for you to be surprised on our day. But the thing is, okay, <laughs> I was very interested in the beginning. Loop me in on the text, and suddenly texts and emails were being sent, and I wasn't cc'd on any of it. So. Blame me, but also the reason why I blame why like I wasn't that hands on was because of the dress. Because of her designing her dress and everything. Right. Which you can't They're be talking part of. about that in their group chats. Mm. So obviously I'm not included in those group chats. And then the group chats would continue without me. So I was out of the loop. It's a day for two, but destined for one. One person really needs to spearhead Where did you it. get that? It's a day for two, destined for one. I just made it up. Was it good? Uh, yeah. It sounds like you like pulled that from like a book. No, no, no. That was that was all me. I, I love that. The, as my wedding day was getting closer, I was getting all those TikToks, wedding TikTok of like, can't wait for my husband to see what we've been working on. Yeah. Yeah. So, That's pretty much what it's going to be. But, but Patricia's been kind of cool with it lately. Were you... Right now, it's been a lot of registry stuff, a lot of stuff showing up in boxes. Uh -huh. Were you very excited about what was in the boxes? Or are you very like, okay, what is it? Okay, cool. I don't need to go up to the box and touch every plate that we bought or uh, that was bought for us. No. Like, you're talking gift-wise? <laughs> yeah. Like, Patricia's like, oh, look at this. We got this thing. Or, like, it's from Crate and Barrel. We can put right. stuff in it. I'm like, cool. Oh, my gosh. It's awesome. From across the room. She's like. Are you not going to come over here to look at it? No. I'm, I'm not. I'm there, not. I get it. I'm happy we own it. But I don't need to stand up, walk over, and look at this dish, a casserole dish, and be like, whoa. I love how excited Patricia gets. But I don't know. I'm more excited for like a ring camera, like something a little I was excited. Some for, buttons. I was excited for the stuff on the day. So like we had those custom – Volpus Villas hats from Old School Hats. Which I love. Those hats fit so good, by the way. So good. Shout out to Old School Hats. But I love those. I love when all like the 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 stuff to make the day feel special. When we had our newspaper invites come, yes. that was cool to see it in. Yes. Like, to be able to touch it. A little stationary kind of thing going on. That yeah. stuff was cool. <coughs> As a guest, what can I expect? 
on the big day? Um, I think you would expect a lot of fantastic food, incredible entertainment. What kind of food are we talking? Um, I would say like a uh, Southern Americana. Is that right? Why? Well, actually, I should just say Southern American, but like modern Southern American. Does that make sense? Are people walking around with trays? Yeah, yeah, a bunch of hors d'oeuvres, and then you can also go and like uh, serve yourself to a wide array of foods. Foods, Joe. I feel like we talked about this last time. I know that I picked out amazing food, but I don't know what food I picked out. Okay. So, there you go. What's our cake plan? Uh, we it's the red velvet cake. We talked about that last time too. I know, it's but it's like in a couple I... weeks now, so it's coming to fruition. I'm I so... know. And I'm, as a you married know what, man now, yeah. as a married man now, I get to I get to enjoy it from the other side. I, the cake is also like the I. Probably down to the bottom of the top 10 things I'm looking forward to the most. What's on the upper of the list? Marrying Patricia. And then what's number two and three? Um, Probably, <laughs> I, I would say number two or three, probably spending time with my groomsmen, genuinely, to be honest. The morning of? Yes, because I've been now a groomsman for two or three of my really, really good No, two or three of my really good friends. And now that it's kind of like my turn, I'm really excited about that. And I don't know. I'm really happy with like my groomsmen and that entire squad. And so, I'm do you looking... know what you're wearing? Do you have any special um, items like, for that it, day? Uh, no, we're doing like classic black uh, special black shoes, tux. special bracelets, special shoes. No, special... what did you get? Well, you didn't have groomsmen, right? So no. you didn't have to get them like gifts or anything. No. I've been, oh, I've been really conflicted about like what a good groomsman gift is, and it's funny. Like the world of being a man, what culture tells us is like guys want this like get them all a cigar cutter when the fuck am i having cigars like or oh hey here's a flask of whiskey or like here's a flask you know we and men we always need a flask i have never once seen a guy whip out a flask the only time you should have a flask is if you're in college football and you're sneaking it in to a venue that doesn't have alcohol and you put it in your boot i'm all about that but who the fuck have you seen have a flask or alcoholics do maybe like an uncle a pervert uncle. An alcoholic uncle <laughs> would have a flask. Oh, get them like a bottle of whiskey or whiskey glasses. Would you, it's like, I don't want to drink whiskey. Would you end up getting them? I kind of want to just get them an air tag. Oh, that'd be fucking well, I mean, great. Last night I had that idea, but I was a little high. And the I was new like, headphones too? The AirPods? No, the ones that go over your head. New Apple headphones? Buddy, that's $500. I have 14 groomsmen. I have 14 groomsmen. And do you wanna add, one do you wanna, of them. you want to do the, the math on that? Like, 14 times 5, 500. $46,000. Yeah, it's, I can't do, I know. The, I really wish, if I had like five groomsmen, I think it would have all gotten them like something really, really nice. I'm kind of being like, okay. Does she have 13 people up there also? Yeah. Yeah. And they're all walking down the aisle together. Yeah. That's going to be so fun. It will be. It will be a lot of fun, Joe. Where do you want me sitting? On your side or her side? <laughs> my side, Joe. My <laughs> side. I need you on my side, which I don't know if we're really going to be doing the traditional bride or groom side. But because a lot of her family comes from Birmingham, it's in her hometown, she's going to be pulling more guests that are local than the out-of-towners. And so I think we also agreed if they're our friends, they should also sit on our side, my side. Is it insane to you that all these people are coming from all around the country? Yes. Yes, big time. And I've been having a lot of anxiety about that. But you know what? That's their business. Them getting there to my wedding, not my business. You get there. I'm not worried about anybody's flights and where they're getting in because I have to surrender. That's out of my control. But I, I have been having – I've been worried about some people running into inconveniences because it's Birmingham where there's not like an Uber every two minutes. Like L.A., you could be like, oh. It's right here. It might be a 5, 10, 15 minute wait on that. So having people a little mentally prepared for your wedding, I was making sure I was requesting an Uber way early on. Meanwhile, Jonah is out in the damn driveway wearing a Kobe Bryant jersey. <laughs> oh, yeah. We were trying to figure out if he's trying to wear that to the— Your wedding was in 15 minutes, and he's he was out there. I texted Susie. I said to make sure that he's taken care of. I have something here I want you to try. I just got these in the mail. Magic I mind. Ha I haven't had them. I haven't had them. So good. I take one every day. Okay, magic mind. Yes, I've heard about these. I actually feel like I've seen these on a lot of other podcasts. I know, yeah, it's it's a bit of matcha. It's a adaptogens, which is a very new word. I just feel like cognitively ready for the day. Because you know when you get enough sleep, right? You wake up in the morning, you set yourself up for the day, and then you have a healthy lunch, you have a healthy dinner, and then you have a great day. I'm down. It's you almost, had it? Yeah. Oh, wait, so, 
Oh, is there, is there a ginger in it? Does it have kind of a spice? It does have a little spice into it. It has a kick. It's almost like the the energy shot type. Not energy shots. It's like um. Yeah, like yeah, I know. Those like turmeric shot yeah, type yeah, yeah, of things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why do they make them those spicy? Just take that spicy thing out. But that's what makes you feel like you're like doing something right. Okay. It's a little caffeine too. Oh, that already smells. What does that smell like? Smells like super healthy and delightful. Ready? 21 calories, baby. Shake, breathe. They tell you to breathe. Jesus, what are we? Cheers, brother. Thank you, Joe. Love you, buddy. Shout out Magic Mind. Oh, that's solid. <laughs> Tasty. Tastes a bit like you just drank like an air freshener kind of a thing. Yes, yeah, you know sweet. <laughs> it does. It does taste like something that would be used to make a room smell good. Boosts your energy, helps you stress less, keeps you focused. Immunity, vitamin C, D, and uh, maybe uh, I need that. I, I th that's interesting. The balance of here's uh, energy, but you're not stressed. Sometimes I like a little stressful energy because yeah. it makes me like really on my toes. But then I don't know what like energy, calm energy is. No, I'm a fan of it. it. It, I mean, I've been taking care of my body a lot. As you can see, I've lost 21 pounds. Yeah. <laughs> gained oh, yes, 10 pounds back on the honeymoon. Joe. Did you gain it all back? No, I gained like five pounds back. Are you being a little bit more nicer to yourself fitness wise or are you still? Absolutely not. I bought my own boxing bag in the garage. I'm going oh, harder than ever. Good. You know what? I was telling Zane this the other day, and I think you should do it. Let's what? you should do the Iron No, the Iron Man. Or do the New York Marathon. I would do the New York Marathon. I wouldn't do an Iron Man. Uh okay. So my the way that my feet are shaped, my right foot angles out. So every time I do a half marathon, my foot just like I feel like I'm hurting my body slowly and slowly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm like I'm at my skinniest because I just ran 13 miles. I just burned like a thousand calories, and you could see my feet walking like, what is that pigeon? Pigeon toed? Are they pronate? Is that the word? I or don't know. my 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 feet like all they bend in like this. So like a lot of my shoes will start like have this weird warp. Inwards. Okay, that's what I have. It's like a pronation problem. But yeah, 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 yeah. yeah you yeah. could see it in my knee, and you could see it in my in my ankles, and it's really weird. So Patri I, Patricia walks like this. She walks like, like kind of like a penguin. Is she going to do that on the yeah. wedding day? Or like Phoebe Bridgers walks like that. It's just this like, I don't know. I'm like, why are you walking like that? I think we're just born like that. I, I think in a past life, I think something happened to me as a baby, to be honest, where I broke my leg. Oh, you think so? Yeah, because unless I'm like deformed, because my foot just hangs out. You'll see it. I'll show you after. I That's walk like a, so interesting. Yeah. So wait, because if you do a marathon, wait, you don't know if you'd be able to complete it or you would just look funny while doing it. I think I'm slowly killing my body. Oh. So that's why I've done three, but I don't think, I don't want to keep doing them. Full marathons? Those are halves. So technically I did one full one and a half. Okay. <laughs> Different days. I don't know actually if I would ever do it. I'm worried I'd get too skinny. Yeah. But I, I just need mass. Like I don't. What care. a problem you had. Because you were too skinny growing up, you say, right? Yeah, so skinny, man. man. Like I, Oh, yeah, like someone would sneeze and I would just fly away in the wind. <laughs> <laughs> That's how like skinny I was, Were bro. you taking fattening shakes? Um, No, uh, uh, I think maybe for a little bit. My mom bought me creatine, but like she also wasn't doing enough research and maybe I should have been doing more research. Oh, wow. Yeah. I had a friend, James, who would take it. And I there I was struggling with my weight. I'm like, you're taking fattening shakes? I'm trying to do the opposite. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just, I don't know. My, I had a fast metabolism and stuff. I really did struggle with it. Did you play a lot of sports? Mm, no, not enough sports. I did a lot of theater, a lot of plays and um. stuff like that. That was like, honestly, my activity. But I think my parents were also kind of concerned about like, they didn't want me to like stunt my growth. So I don't think that they were like that in making sure I was working out right. or anything or wasn't into like buying the supplements and stuff for me. But then once I became like a full on adult, suddenly I shot up and all of that. When so. did you start working out? What age? Oh, I guess I started working out this summer before I went into college. Like I would do P90X. I remember I was doing P90X when Michael Jackson died and like our good family friend Kathy called me. And I was like, you know, breathing really heavily. I'm like, what's up? She goes, is it? She goes, can you turn on the TV and see if Michael Jackson died? Because the radio is saying that he died. So I did P90X. Pam, we call her Blam. You know, all of that. German potato soup. Uh, okra. Um, did a bunch of that. And then, but I was never like, 
I never been into amazing shape. I like getting in shape to a point where I'm like, I'm happy and I'm blown away by the transformation of my body compared to my younger self. I can look at photos when I was really, really skinny and be like, whoa, I look like a lot more healthier than I did then and I'm happy with it. I don't want to do, I don't know if I ever really want to be in amazing shape. You don't like, want to go overboard. Because I'm, I know I don't think I would commit to the perfect shape for that long and then I'm worried that I'll never get back to it and then that would affect my mental health. Like mm. I don't think people with six packs are that happy. Oh, I feel so contrary to that. You do? Uh, you, uh, yeah, it's complete opposite? Yeah, because I, for me it's easy to maintain because I have such a good balance of it. You also don't party, I guess, as hard as I do. Right. I, I, how old are you? I am 31 now. Yeah, I feel like as I'm older my body is a little more decrepit so it's hard for me to treat it like shit when you though were like out of shape were you did you have a more like sedented what's the word sedentary lifestyle like were you not like were you really inactive or are you more active i always feel like you've been very still always on the go 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 i was always jojo jo, go 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 jojo on the go but i didn't i didn't eat right so i like i wouldn't sleep enough Okay. I don't know. There's just like little things. Like you don't eat right. You don't get like as hard boners, you know? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, when I never struggle in that department. Hey. You know I, mean? I get, yeah. But I, when you when you take care of your body, everything just starts working right. Yeah. So that I think what's cra it's it's incredible when like you do work out like consistently and then the first thing you wake up in the morning, your body's like, let's go work out. Yes. Like, that is such a great feeling. And when you take one break off of it, like – I did not work out yesterday. I was completely exhausted. Went to Disney over the weekend and just... I was, Disneyland? Yeah, I went to Disneyland. Actually, I went to Disneyland on Thursday, but it still kind of fucked me up. Was it a blast? Oh, dude, it was so... It was so fucking... What amazing. time you got there? Break the whole down, uh, down for me. What time we got there? We got there around 8.30, and I was a little stressed because I was like, we need to get there at 7.30. We How need to get there when the park's open because, man, I'm, I wouldn't say I'm a Disney adult. I'm a Disney enthusiast, and if I see a TikTok on my feed that says five hidden things about Disney that you need to know... Buddy, I watched that video to the end. I can't get enough of it. How many people were you with? Uh, just me and Patricia, which was oh, a great- Oh, that's a perfect amount of people. Which was a great move. I've been wanting to do that for a long time because every time I've gone to Disneyland, I'm always in like kind of a bigger group. Someone's calling the shots and I can never go do what I want to do. I'm always like, guys, look at this little nook and cranny. They're like, come on, we got to go. We got to go to this ride. So- Plus you could do the single rider hack. Which is one other person? Yes, but have you heard about this new hack, though? It's like the Disney Disney Genie Plus? Yes. I was amazed by that. You pay $25 extra per person, and it's almost like this automated, automatic AI that just kind of lets you know when there's an opening in a lightning lane that you don't have to pay for, and it reserves you that spot, and you just go at that time, and you get on. Like that, we didn't have to wait in line for anything the entire time we were there. Probably what? spent about like hundred dollars extra. Like, but what time did it. you leave? The park? Yeah. Oh, we kind of left around eight thirty because we got a reservation at Benihana. Oh, that's a full day. Yeah, but then I was worried that we left too early because you got to go see Fantasmic. You gotta see the f the firework show. Did it you do uh, pirates? No, we did not do Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh, that Why? smell in there is so good. Okay, what is the damn smell? Because I feel like it's the same damn smell that's in, uh, you know, it's a small world. We're just talking about indoor log ride no, smell. No, no, no. Pirates has this distinct smell because of how they treat the water and all the dead bodies people throw in it. I, you I know a lot of people throw ashes in there? Yes, I have heard that many, Crema many times. The cremations, that's where people want to be thrown. But who, what kind of person is like, Throw my ashes in Pirates of the Caribbean. At I mean, Disneyland. I'm down to be thrown in Disney. I guess, but like, eh, okay. But do you think like once your ashes are released, your soul is officially released, like deeper into the body, or do you ex still exist with the ash? That's too far ahead for me to think. Because I'm then just I feel like feel... you'd be filtered all out by like the end of the month at Disney, and then it'd be all new water. And technically, I don't think your soul is still in it. I don't. But think I they... don't know. All all respect to people who lost their. Or decided to lease, release their loved one's ashes in a public place full of children. I don't think they, they do that. They don't drain the water. 
They have to, Joe. It's Disney. No, they don't. They treat you're, you're it. You're telling me Pirates of the Caribbean, they've been circulating the same damn water since, what, the 80s? I genuinely do not think that they, they pump it out. Okay. There's uh, uh, no... That's a lot of water. That ride is huge. Is it? Yeah. Oh, I guess in my brain it's so much smaller. I have done it. Um, they just didn't have the lightning passes on Pirates of the Caribbean, which I thought was a little strange. Yeah, there's a couple of the OG rides they don't yes. have. Yes, I did for. go in the Haunted Mansion though. That was pretty cool, and it was the uh, Nightmare Before Christmas kind of uh, themed one. You want to is... hear a fun little fact? Let's hear the fun little fact, Joe. I helped shoot a promo for the Haunted Mansion with Owen Wilson, Jamie Lee Curtis, and there's one other guy. I forget his name. Oh, the new Haunted Mansion, because yep. it was the one that was with Eddie Murphy that wasn't very good. Oh, I like that one. Okay, but this is a new one just called Haunted Mansion again. It's it's funny how we're doing these reboots, but we just call shit by the same name. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, let's make another mummy and just call it the mummy. mummy. Or we like we just we had that. Yeah. And then now it's another Haunted Mansion. Was it good? The movie was it good? I didn't see the movie, but the shoot day was cool because we shot it at the Haunted Mansion. So we were there the more super early in the day. Whoa. And then all the stars came and then the whole thing was that the cast would hide throughout the ride pretending to be the workers there so unsuspecting guests would walk through and then jamie lee curtis would open the door and go welcome to the haunted mansion and you filmed that yeah i was the, i was the gorilla style guy so there did were, you get invited as an influencer to do it no i was hired as a cameraman camera op i still take a uh, job like that every now and then so who get, who reaches out to you for that? I have production companies that. Are need. you going? Are you like get just emails that like we're like we're looking for somebody and you apply via that? That's how he found me from this production company. He used to watch my videos like five years ago. Do you remember wow. when I shot with um, Tom Ford? You shot with Tom Ford, the designer. Yeah, you didn't like know it's me, Tom Ford. Yeah, Tom Ford. I take Ford a bath three times a day from, I, from Fashion Week. I tried to make City. a perfume that smelled like cigarettes and vodka breath, but yeah. it didn't turn out the way it went. He's from he's from Texas. Yes, he is from Texas. He te he terrifies the shit out of me. He was so cool. He touched my shoulder. I felt like I was touching God. Whoa, it was so cool. And it was right after I just watched Nocturnal Animals, which incredible film he yeah directed. with amy adams and jake Aaron. gyllenhaal yes and nobody wears tom ford in that entire movie which i thought was interesting why like, would they that kind of takes tom you out Ford's of it directing it you would i just think it's a little i thought when i heard tom ford was directing a movie i'm like oh everyone's could probably be wearing tom ford in it no not one person did i'm like mm -hmm. oh so he didn't advertise his his products at all in that movie because he's just cool. he's a filmmaker he wants to keep that separate yeah i agree okay so jamie lee curtis filming haunted mansion oh. you got scouted out because of the tom ford thing five years ago i got the email from the guy he's like hey joe saw your videos i thought you'd be perfect to film these videos for fashion week uh with tom ford so i flew out to new york city and i shot with tom ford and we filmed like six videos in one day during his fashion week and you know how quick i am so the whole point was why I'd be perfect was that I could shoot it and edit it so they can go up immediately. So I shot the videos. I'm upstairs editing. He comes up during his fashion show, and he's helping call out edits on my computer. He's like, let's move that shot over there. Let's push that. It was the coolest Tom experience. Tom Ford. Coolest guy. Wow. That's pretty neat. Wild. That's, you, what, that's what that Webby behind you is from. We won an award for it. I got to see this. Is the video still up? Uh, On, like, his channels. Yeah, I'll show you it. That's good. That's really cool. Tom Ford. Is it very artsy looking or is it very Joe looking? <laughs> it was Joe vlog style. That's what that that was like the they wanted social video. So that's what I was doing. I feel like I've had a crusty in my eye this entire time. You look beautiful. I didn't even notice it. I'm such an eye crusty guy. Are you an eye crusty guy? Yeah, when I wake up. It's been happening me, to me every day since I've <laughs> I feel like been alive, but I never think about it till much later. You know what I started doing, which I never did? Snot rockets. Go on. I don't know why. I just, I'll feel a booger in my nose. And I'll go, and I'll blow it out. Never used to do that up until maybe five months ago. I actually feel like that's a little bit better. Are you a nose picker? Eh, like, eh. Oh, God. I'm the worst, like, when I'm driving. Oh, yeah. Like, it's just like, I just have to be busy all the fucking time. And I'm just picking my nose constantly when I'm driving. Let's address the elephant in the room. What's up? You were on an episode of Cart Narcs. Yes, I was. Was that authentic? Did you yes. run into them? That wasn't planned. Did I not tell you about this? Joe, okay, first <laughs> off, huge Cartnarks fan. I've watched it nonstop, talked about it on Unfiltered many, many times. Um, and usually the videos, from what I've understood from the videos I've seen, he's like 
all across America, or like sometimes in middle America. Does he travel He's never Davis? in L.A.? Well, so I go uh, to Ralph's one day, and I'm doing a mobile order pickup. And you, you had know, a lot of a lot of a shopping lot of groceries, and I remember the mobile order like pickup line was like filled with people, and like the parking lot was full. And so I parked on the side of the road, and I just walked up to the store, and I go, "I have a mobile order pickup, but the lines are full. Can you guys just bring it to me?" And they're like, "Absolutely." They give me my grocery bags, and I'm walking out, and I see this guy out there wearing a vest and like a little flag and like a pink megaphone, and I'm like. I wonder if that's Cartnarx, but I'm like, there's no way that's Cartnarx. It's probably some guy walking around trying to get petitions for something. And then I start getting closer and closer, Joe. Were you getting closer to try and ask him? No, I wanted to see what was on his back it, or like uh, if the if what I was reading was correct. And as I'm walking to my car, he's standing by my car, not for a Cartnarx situation. Thank I didn't even God. know. I Because I didn't take a cart. I did not take a cart. And right when I read the back, it says Cartnarks. I'm like, oh my <laughs> goodness. I couldn't believe it. I, it was with my own eyes. It seemed like I manifested it because you just don't. I just couldn't believe the moment was happening right in front of me. Like, this is now happening, Cartnarks. And then I go, are you Cartnarks? He goes, I'm sure I am. Skip the elite doo doo. But he was very focused, though, on. Uh, the person he was busting. My biggest regret, Joe, is that I wish I got a little bit more involved. But I think in that moment he was very like, Thank hey, hi, nice to meet you, but I need to be focused on making my own content kind of a thing. Is he a content creator or is he a policeman? What's his deal? Uh is what's his guy? deal? He's a vigilante. <laughs> that's 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 what that's what he is. I mean, he is out there to um harass and exploit <laughs> Um, the biggest fault in uh, the morality of man, and that's uh, it's pe there's people who return their cards and people who don't return their cards, and I think it's a huge reflection on the type of person that you are. Because have you ever read the children's book? If everybody, well, if everybody did it, it's a it's a great kids book that teaches just like the consequence of like we have to have a bit of order and civility in our own life if nobody returned their cart it would be an entire mess in the parking lot so this guy's the batman to you uh, in a way yeah absolutely some people though are very anti cart narcs which i think is like very strange like you don't know what someone's going through man so maybe let's not harass people and exploit them on the internet like okay sure like but what makes this person so entitled and above it all that they don't they can't walk 10 feet and put their cart in the uh the cart stall does he harass them as soon as he sees them well he goes no he does and he goes why don't you return your cart and they're like get the fuck away from me that someone else can do the job then he throws the magnet usually he doesn't like i don't think he does it immediately but he asks the question why can't they and like you forgot to return your cart, and then he puts the the sticker on a magnetic sticker. By the way, so these people, you know what? No, but there's a common truth he taps on. Rarely are these people like, "Up, oh, you're right, silly me." They're all assholes, and I think that's a big reflection to go that these assholes exist. Those people exist in real life, and they need to be exposed. Because it's yeah, it's uh, it's the it's the. I don't know. It's just the duality of man. There's people who return their cards and people who don't. Why don't you tag team with them? Go help uh, them. I wouldn't, Joe. I would never do that. You can't confront a stranger about that. Uh, can he's you imagine? Get shot no, he looks like he's wearing like a bulletproof vest. He needs like, to. W the vest he's wearing, it's like bulletproof style. No, it takes some guts to do that. Like, no, 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 no. What Those was are he crazy doing? people. Was he on tour doing this? Um, Why was I he bet here? He, I, I bet he probably had a business trip and he came out here. I know he's been on Dr. Phil before. I really did not get to interact with him that much. And it's interesting when the video came out, I'm the thumbnail. Yes, and, yes, you go. <laughs> And I, do, and I don't know if he uploaded it just, you know, as a regular video. And then everyone was like, that's Matt King. And then he changed it. Mm -hmm. And then he uh, uh, just, yeah, altered it. That's so funny.
it's pretty it's pretty awesome would you have been mortified if he came up to you like you were just having a bed oh day. well you know oh well one i would never leave a cart not re- not return ever 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 but if it did i would totally laugh about it, be like oh my god i'm a huge fan of your videos because i've seen that happen sometimes people recognize him and he's busted them and they've been good sports about it just be a good sport okay like i understand people make mistakes sometimes you're lazy you'll forget to do something and you get busted for it own it but I think it's just funny people who get angry over doing something that simple and that kind. Because imagine if you walked out in in, the, in a your car's all scuffed up because there was just a, a loose cart and it ran into yours. That's what that that happens when you you leave a cart out. The wind's gonna take it. It's gonna move around. Someone's gonna run into it. What makes you think you are so special? To not return a cart. I just struggle with that all the time, which is why I love the videos. Have you ever been um, – has anyone ever hit your car before? Um, no. No. Uh, oh, yeah, someone's hit my car one time, like uh, my old Kia Soul from like behind. But not, from a cart, I don't know. I know there's a ding on the side of my car, which is a little frustrating to look at. But I got a Defender. I think dings and scratches and marks add character to it, which is so great because – It kind of sucks with, like, cars. You have to be like, oh, it's my baby. It's so perfect. It's a vehicle that is made to go out into the elements. So why does, like, one scratch or one ding, like, why lose sleep over that, you know? Yeah. It's supposed to protect you from the outside world. So I don't get too stressed about dings and scratches and stuff. Right. If there was a massive dent, I'd be like, okay, we got to get this fixed. Are you the same way with your apartment that you're living in? Is everything trying to be pristine? Um, that's a very good question, Joe. I think Patricia and I, we do try to thrive on, I think I'm big about utilizing spaces and, uh, having areas meant for where they're useful. So like if you have a closet, if you find yourself reaching for the same things every day, those things should be within reach, but hidden, you know, I hate having to dig for things that I need. So I'm very – I'm big into, like, organizing stuff behind cabinets or what needs to be here. Like, there should be a charger there or um, that kind of stuff. But does it need to be pristine? Uh, if we're, if we're having guests over, of course. Right. Yeah. Is, do, you, do you feel that way about your place? Now I do. I want to – I started boxing in the garage, which I never do. I'm never spending time in the garage. Yeah. But I want to clean out the floor from the oil stains now because I'm spending time in it. I know. Isn't it weird how, like, we're kind of becoming, like, old men? We are. But it's cool. It's yeah. gradual. We should be starting to take care of ourselves a little better. Otherwise, we're just immature. Is Caitlin clean? Incredibly. She She's the reason why this house is clean as it is. Oh, good. I am the one that joeifies it. Good. I got Halloween costumes upstairs. I got drinks everywhere. Yeah. Do you also need to get rid of stuff? Yes. If yeah. you want to take anything, we can go upstairs and just grab stuff. No, 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 no. I don't want any more things. The idea of things <laughs> is driving me nuts. I'm eliminating things from my life. I have a um, fire hydrant in the garage. I have a Coke machine upstairs. It's just too much. A Coke machine upstairs? It's too much. Yeah, yeah. Don't, you, uh, get, get rid of it. Get rid of it, guys. There's too much waste in this world. There's people who actually could make it useful. Um, I just got a water rower. Water rower. I have a water rower too. Yeah, do you yeah, use in Ergata. Um, I don't because I don't have space for it in our new place anymore. I'm mm. thinking about selling it. Maybe. Where do you, do you like it? Yes. What kind is it? Just water rower, the brand, or Ergata? No, this company sent it to me. It, I don't know the name of it, but it's really good. And yeah. I'm getting a a standing treadmill. Oh, badass! A standing one, like yeah. just to go like walk on and get your steps in. Like the Zane, Zane has, has one. Are they loud? I haven't used it yet. Treadmills kind of <laughs> – treadmills remind me of when I was a kid. Like, it was a toy that you weren't allowed to play on, but then the adults would be on the treadmill, and then they would yell at you on the treadmill to do other things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Just like, kids, can you guys go do your <laughs> – can you can you please go do your laundry? We have to be at the event soon. And they're just like – a, 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 treadmills are triggering for me. Were you ever a DDR kid? Uh, dance, D- dance. DDR, dance, dance, revolution. Were you extreme? You could spend the night, not if you want. Da, 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 da. You were, you were. Did you have your own pad at home? Uh, yes, I did, but it was just it was one of those the cheap, cheap like Game Shark kind of pads, and like it uh it wasn't that good. And then I remember like I 
it's it's kind of like sad the stuff our parents buy us when we're kids. We're like, I want it. It'll be so awesome. And then you get it and like kind of sucks. Yeah. And you're like, oh, I feel bad that my parents probably spent thirty, forty dollars on that piece of shit controller. Oh, I loved my DDR. I lost a lot of weight on it too. <laughs> The, like the mat did you, okay what kind of mat pad did you have like the one that was like that was like a sleeping bag material that was like tissue paper yes but it worked on my carpet because i had that cheap basement carpet that you get okay and it just wouldn't move on there oh so i would just practice for hours and then i go to the arcade and i was really good at it shit d i only like ddr extreme the green one because it had that spend the night song and it had butterfly and those were my favorite ones and those were the ones that i would like have down pretty good you know i bought one of those little ambernick emulators the other day what's that like those do you ever see the tiktok ads for it? it's like it has thirty thousand games of all of your favorite childhood games n64 ps2 like all the games on it is it cool kind of i was a little kind of like disappointed where i was like why did i buy this i was like i want to play all the old harry potter games because i used to play them on my computer like harry potter chamber <laughs> of secrets and stuff and then i like saw it and you're like God, the graphics just back then sucked. The only ones that the only nostalgia games that I'd still play is House of the Dead. What the fuck is House of the Dead, Joe? You never played House of the Dead in the arcade? You have the gun and you're just shooting zombies? Oh, it's an arcade game. Yeah, but they had it for Sega Dreamcast, and then I think they put it out on PS2. You're shooting zombies. Yeah, House you get of the, the Dead. Is it so kind of like Asian? No. It's It's not like Time Crisis or like I did have Time Crisis, and that one was sick, too. That is pretty bad. Yeah, I, I like the to, games with extensions. I went to that athlete Jordan Clarkson's house, and he had Time Crisis like, in his, like... The real one? Yeah. That like, was my dream! It was, like, Time Crisis 2. It was, like, even, like, you know, like, Time Crisis 2 was, like, better? Yeah. Yeah, it was, like, Like, that. world's better. That, I was looking at arcade games to try and get it, but they're all, like, fifteen. What well, You don't need an arcade game, Joe, in this house. You, not, not in this one. You're a married <laughs> man. You one. are a married man. I don't think you need an arcade game. Yeah, like a Jurassic Park one where you can sit in it and it has a surround sound. That is kind of cool. See? That is kind of cool. The Jurassic Park ones, I do I do like those. I would do you remember the, one, the underwater aquatic adventure one? That was I like didn't the, like the, that one. I, I loved it because I just remember seeing that final... That final one, and you shot up that. that you shark. see like an octopus, squid, yes. like. dolphins. Yeah. Um, the snowboard one would be sick too to have. That would be so loud. That one and a skateboard. Oh, remember there was the skiing one too. That yes, was yes, like yes. Kind of silly looking. I love those. To have oh, a whole the, the room rowing, of those. The, the rowing boat one. And with you the need yellow. A oh damn! I love arcade games. Talking about this, but they've had these. They have these ones that just look like your standard two button arcade joystick ones. But they have the 30,000 games on it. Like, you can play The Simpsons on it. You can play Street Fighter. Yeah. All of those. You should buy, if you're going to buy one, buy one of those. No. Because they're all emulators, man. But you the games just... aren't that good. I feel like you need to get the one for the one. Like, I get Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That's a great game. That, you can get that on just the joystick two button one, But you need man. the one with, like, the graphic on it. Like, it needs to be that nostalgia. Like, I want someone to come over. No, because the TV, Joe, this is my argument. The TVs of those, that's just an old school TV on a mirror being projected. Wouldn't you want to see it in high res on a great damn screen? Mm -mm. Uh, it takes it away. I it stayed at an away. Airbnb that had all 30,000 games on it, and I couldn't get enough of it, Joe. Uh, no, my friend had one that had it, and we just we played it like once, and that was it. You'd rather just play the same game over and over on a big, chunky machine thousand percent okay 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 i respect that time crisis 2 house of the dead maybe even some sonic did you play silent hill is that a good game and that that one was like too scary i never got into that i know i've been seeing clips of it lately i've been into like getting a good spooky game going like something fun to play or a good book to read but mm. goosebumps uh, you could read that goosebumps that was, that was escalofrios what's that that's goosebumps in spanish uh oh um. Did you ever meet Arl Stein? I did. When did you meet Arl Stein? Bullshit. I swear to God. When and where? I just, I just, I, I asked that just to be funny. In Sixth grade, elementary school. He came to my school as a book signing tour. Get out of here! And then he followed it up by going to the Barnes and Noble in our town. Whoa! Yes. Where's he? Is he from Jersey? I don't think so. He. Our he has school, big Jersey vibes. He does. But is Arl Stein Jewish? He might be. Okay. I think he, he from what I remember, he could be. But they'd always get um, really cool authors. Look at that spider. What Holy shit. Fuck? Look at it. Ooh, Joe. Joe. <laughs> that's huge. Joe. Dude, that's a black widow. 
You gotta kill it. No, no, no. You kill that. I'm too scared about uh, squishing spiders because if you squish a spider, they all uh, like all their eggs. Like more spiders can come out of it. Narrate don't, me. I'm don't scared. Don't you have? Oh, wait, don't you have one of those uh, the the bug catcher things? I feel like you buy shit on Amazon all the time. Like the one that's like the little wand that opens up and you can like. No, I don't. But you're just getting a piece of paper. Well, I got it. What am I supposed to do? It's gonna bite you. No, he's not. And you might get special powers. This guy's going real slow. That was a big ass spider. Ah! Makes you, it makes, it kind of freaks you out when you see a spider. You're like, how many more of those are around? They're everywhere. How do you think he got in here, Joe? So Joe right now has a piece of paper. He's scooping ah! up the spider. Oh god! And now it's going out the door. Do you use AI in any of your life? Oh uh, yeah, I Would use. You? I think I use AI at least a couple times a week. On what? Um, sometimes when we have an ad read on the podcast and they give you over that really, really big brief, we then make the AI read the brief and shorten it down to a great bite-sized like script so we don't have to sit there and like figure out which uh, bullet points that we want to do. Oh, that's so interesting. That goes smoothly. I do AI to complain to my landlord multiple times. Um, just to write, write out the situation of what's going on, and I just put it in the AI and go improve the writing of this letter, and it will like make it way more just like succinct and uh, uh better. Um, so I do that most of the time. Oh, that's yes. so wild. And then sometimes if it's like I'm writing something and I'm like I need a better like line for this, I just ask AI. Do uh -huh. you? I use it to edit the podcast, but that's it. I oh, we use AI to edit the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's like, yeah, yeah. I guess I'm thinking of like chat. GPT. I tried using it also to help me get quest questions for guests. But I can tell that you. Yeah, they're you very generic. AI questions. Very, like, where are you from? <laughs> yeah. No, 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 I'm kidding. I use it for the first two and then I never use it again. I, yeah, yeah. They were also wrong. They told me something about MTV Jesse from Nelk, and he's like, that wasn't me. I'm like, oh. Gulp. <laughs> yeah. So. I don't, I don't, from that, that's why I try and just do it all myself now. Oh, interesting. I've never, I've wondered, did you, did you prepare AI questions about me? No, 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 no. I think I know you enough. Um, but lately I've been trying to like avoid like too much having it be a question and answer kind of podcast and more just a conversation to get their opinion about things. I've been trying to do that lately because I feel like the podcast I listen to, they're not doing that, but who was your favorite guest you ever had on Unfiltered? Oh God, that's such a great question. On Unfiltered, yeah. Oh, actually, I feel my favorite episode is actually a Patreon episode, and it was Remy Cruz, and it was a high episode, and we got high, and we talked a lot about stuff about our childhood, and I was just on one that day. I was busting jokes left and right, and I had Zane Heath and Remy like in stitches. So. I that's that genuinely is my favorite episode. It's been one of my favorites to where I've like told Zayn and Heath, I'm like, why don't we upload that one day? But I don't know if Remy is like too comfortable with having like a full YouTube video of her on cannabis. But I would say that one is my favorite. Also, I love Miss Juicy. Those were really great. Um, what was your favorite vlog bit you were ever part of? With David Dobrik? Sure. Um. Oh, my favorite, uh, the one when I got fake arrested, or he hired fake cops to come arrest me at a party because I genuinely <laughs> believed it. You Up really thought you were getting arrested? Yes. Because, well, at first I was like, uh, something seems fishy here. This seems like they're kind of strippers, or I'm like, when does this, when is this going to be over? And then it was like, nothing happened in the apartment. They go, we're taking you away. And then that's when I was like, Wait, where are they taking me? So when you saw the cop car, you started thinking. Then that it? got that enhanced even more when I saw the cop car, where I was like, "This is, well, one, this is ridiculous. I'm being accused of a crime I didn't commit, and two, I was getting so mad at David for filming it. I'm like, this isn't, <laughs> this isn't funny. This is not going online. Yeah. And that's when everyone was like, "Oh, that's where Matt the Rat started was from that damn video." But I'll stand by it. And then. Then when I remember when I got into the car, I realized that the interior was very like primitive. It was very from like the '90s. It was, you would think that a modern cop car would have like touch screens and and colorful LCD screens and all of that. There was none of that. And I was like, wait, this seems kind of weird. And then that's right when I looked at David and David goes, Matt, why are you getting so upset about being arrested by these fake cops or whatever? And then I was like, oh. 
was that what was that was that like a dawning like you fucker or were you like ah that was good oh no it was good i was so relieved oh my gosh i would he, i wish he would have got me a car at some point in my <laughs> in our friendship though because like i did th then i think the next one i was pranked with like there was an intruder coming into like scott and todd's house was it I, alex ernst in a mask yes it was one of those did i you got believe really that spooked one? by uh yeah, uh, yeah, a little bit I believed it, kind of. Yeah, I kind of believed it in the beginning, but also at the same time kind of hamming it up. Because I just like, I don't know, I was going to help out David, yeah. you know? But yeah, never got a car. I almost did one time. How? David? Yeah, how do you almost get oh, a car? I don't even know if I've ever told this story. <laughs> Tell me. He, he, he made me come over, just me and him, which was very strange. Never had just kind of a one-on-one -on -one me his and old David house? prank. Yeah, his old house. Okay. I come in. He has three cups sitting on a table. Oh, yeah. You almost did win a car. Yeah. And he goes, here's $100. And he goes, I'm putting it under one cup. And he goes, I'm going to move these around. Follow, follow the $100. <laughs> Moves it around. He goes, okay, now which one's the $100? And I go, this one. He goes, oh, yeah, that is it. Do you know what was under the other two cups? And I go, what? He lifts them up. It was two keys to, like, an Audi i8, like that Super 8 or that Super car that they have. And I'm like, wait, what? And he goes, go look outside. You would have won one of these cars. These are, like, $180,000 cars. And I'm like, are you fucking kidding me, David? <laughs> Did are you, keep you the fucking kidding me? You kept the 100 bucks. Yeah, but I was in the darkest place of my life during that, and I was already – I was very, very depressed, and he did that, and I was like, that is so fucking cruel. Why don't you should have just gave me the car? He, and he goes, you out of all people I thought would solve it, and I was like, ugh, and then I was I – was, I felt like I was going to throw up. Was he filming it? He kind of stopped filming because he felt bad, and I think he didn't even like share the whole thing because then I got mad at him. Where I go, that's, that's so cruel to do that to a friend. Oh, I so I, disagree. What? I so disagree. It's you fun. thought? Oh, you thought it was fun? I thought it was just like, ah, you bastard. And then he had J Jason come over, but Jason kind of faked it. And Jason won. And then he had to film me like looking at Jason being like, yeah, happy for you and stuff, I guess. But then I still never got a car. <laughs> so I almost I almost got a $180,000 car from David. But the thing is, though, I don't, I don't need a car from David. I really don't. But I know. Yeah. I didn't either until I got a Corvette. Oh, I was there that day. Yeah. I remember that. Did you know? What would you think when you heard I was getting one? Cool. Can't wait till I get one. <laughs> Can't wait till Well, no. Next. Do you remember what David also said right after you? Do you remember what he said? Didn't he say Matt King is the only one or something? No, he goes, Matt, you're next. <laughs> he said that. And for me, I was like, ha, ha, ha. And then I was like, <laughs> I was like, maybe that is true. And then it didn't. It never happened. He it, panned to you, too, and zoomed in, right? Yeah, he goes, Matt, you're next. Or I don't know. I can't remember if he had the camera on me, but he said that because you picked it up out of like a trash can, right? After the nitrogen explosion with the ping pong balls. I think he did pan to you and zoom in. I remember that clip. Did that, did that make it? In the it didn't make it, but that's the setup in case it ever happened. <laughs> Yeah, I guess I, w I, I would actually really would like a car from David, but I don't know if he's doing car giveaways anymore. But well, then again, there's other people out there who really do want a car. You just said you didn't you want one. You know what? One. I would like a car to give to Patricia. Okay, but you Patricia's don't... been wanting to kind of sell her car now. But you already said you don't want one, and you also said you don't want to do a Mr. Beast challenge. So I'm going to make sure neither of those happen. But I also told you the Mr. Beast thing. I'm saying all that just so he has me on for a challenge, so I can see it from my own eyes. I just want to know if... A Mr. Beast production, if everyone is nice and is it all, is everyone happy? Because what the vibes I get looking at those videos, I cannot finish a single one. Oh, really? Unless it's Mr. Beast going, I'm, I bought $50,000 worth of scratch off tickets. I'm going to watch that. Like, I'll watch that. But when he has these people, I coming off of like the streets, putting their, their, their hopes and their dreams on the line for a chance to win something. Uh, it makes me it makes me sad. I don't know. It oh, makes I me... so disagree. Would you rather that not happen at all then? I the thing is I couldn't I can never be Mr. Beast and get people to do that because it breaks. I I'm a big I don't think like everyone deserves to be a winner kind of a thing, but I it just breaks my heart when they see these people who are like sweating, exhausted. They've stayed up for hours. And all the and they got a wife and kids at home. They want to win this so bad, and they don't. Oh, breaks my heart. Breaks my heart. And then 
in I I don't know. Or let's have let's have a, a, a person from every single age, all in these tiny boxes. That was such One, a good two, video. Three, four. I'm very creative, but like, oh, then I like start like then I start just like cringing about like, wait, you're telling me there's a 91 year old person, 92 year old person, 93 year old person, like all in those boxes. Uh, Do you feel the same people, way? Let those people just go live their lives. Do you feel the same way about Wheel of Fortune for the two people who don't win and get to spin? That's five fuck. That's Wheel of Fortune is five people. Like it's not. Is it three? It's been around since the be or three people. Do you feel bad it's for been those other two? Since getting a time. But I'm just saying. The same thing. I'm just saying. Two let's get. Let's get a person from every age and put them into a box. Yeah, but Pat Sajak, let's and grab we make three them people. eliminate. It's so, that to me is like a little, you know, like dark people who play The Sims and do like dark challenges and stuff. Like with their throw them Sims. in the pool and let's, take away their Let's make one hundred moms the and let them have one hundred babies. Like it's 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 next level. It is genius. But, dude, there's some part of it where it makes me, like, cringe. I cannot watch it. Oh, he's not picking you for the next challenge. Why not? Because you're criticizing too much. Do you think so? Yeah. Well, then I'm sorry that like he, <laughs> that I hurt his feelings. I really don't. I'm not going to sit here and bash on another creator. I think he deserves all the success that's coming him. I think he has given away so many things. I think Mr. Beast is a saint and a genius businessman. I will never hate on someone for, for having strong work ethic and creative ideas. I think that's bullshit. I would never, ever, ever, ever try to put down another creator. I'm just saying what I like and what I find entertaining, oof, I can't watch that stuff. Matt King, thanks so much for being here. What? Are we over? <laughs> it's done now? Is this how we go out? Yeah. Oh, man. Now I'm feeling anxious. All right. Well, your wedding's in a couple of weeks. I'm super pumped. Thanks for inviting me. I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Joe, I cannot wait to have you there. And to I'm going to have my red mohawk, the big day. <coughs> it's going to be sick. Red mohawk? Yeah, I'm going to do a hairstyle on the day for you. I actually wouldn't mind. Well, you know what? Then why, why are you trying to call more attention to you on my own wedding day? <laughs> okay, I won't. I won't. I won't. <laughs> How dare you? Well, I don't know. I would be a little like, out of all fucking days, go get the red. Start do red hawk, red mohawk today. I have to. The, my barber's only free on Oct on um, that day. Who is your barber? Uh, I'm doing it myself. What what the fuck was that? Oh yeah, my barber's on free that day. I'm like, okay, well then who was that? It's myself. Go listen to Matt on Good Influences, Hoot and a Half, and Unfiltered. That's right, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't know when this episode will come out. Probably it's coming out today because that's just how fast Joe edits. But uh, be on the lookout for Adam Melcher's new music video, Big Time, Good Time. Ooh, let's coming go. On YouTube very, very soon. Please go see it if you're watching this episode much later. Also, look at my socks. It's Patricia. Oh, that's great. Lightweights. Out. Peace out. Is that good? That was amazing. Ah.